Kylan Hill, Mississippi State, five foot ten, two hundred fifteen pounds. This is a guy. Uh, he, he's a he's a solid guy. He is. He's, he's very solid. He's built very well. He runs very powerful. Like he's one of those big, strong runners. And this is a guy that he he opted out last year after three games. After because, three games, it was I, that seemed like it was a coach thing. Like it, Mike Leach came in with the yes. the, the air raid type of offense. <laughs> he got what is it. 15 carries for 58 yards in the first three games. And then there was like a weird, like kind of suspension rumor that was kind of confirmed by Leach. And then like two weeks later, he was like, all right, I'm done. You know, he had, he I'm going to get ready for the NFL. He only had 15 carries. So this is a big, powerful back, right? Big, right. powerful back. In 2020, he played in three games. He had 15 carries, 23 receptions, eight, eight catches for 158 yards and touchdown in his first game versus LSU. And then his third game, he had 15 receptions versus Kentucky for yeah, 79 it's, yards. It, it's very odd use. And he's like, I'm out of here. But what's good, what, what, But I mentioned that because like, I, what I like about that is, is like watching his tape from 2019, you're like. That was the that was the biggest deficiency. Yeah. You're like, this guy, I don't, yeah, he's he's one of these big, powerful running backs. And then all of a sudden comes in 2020, and he's like, oh, he's just a pass catcher <laughs> running back. And he's in an air raid offense. Yeah. And he's being used as an air raid offense receiver. It was insane. It was very I, I, I remember hearing, uh, I think Max Borgie actually tweeted it out right after Mike Leach left and went to uh, Mississippi State. He And that was the his old running back, basically, Mike Leach's old running back. And he was like, yeah, I finally get to run the ball now. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, that kind of shows you a little bit. But it did get to show both sides of Kylan Hill, which I think was was really good for his draft draft stock. And he he's a weird prospect because again he's one of these big guys uh, that runs like powerful. He's he's a violent runner, but when you see him play, like he's not very powerful, right? Like he's not overly powerful when you watch him. Uh, I thought when going watching his 2019 uh, tape, like his vision was okay. And what what really was weird about him too, it's like okay, LSU, Auburn, Alabama, wasn't very good. Then he plays Arkansas, uh, Abilene Christian. <laughs> Louisiana, Tearing Southern Mississippi does really, really good. And he was also only a starter for one year as well. So he's one of these guys. One and a half years or one in three. 1.3. Yeah. <laughs> one and a quarter. It's just, he's just one of those guys. I don't ever envision him being an NFL starter ever. Like yeah. I just don't see it with him. I don't see there's no second gear. There's no, he's not overly powerful. His vision's just okay. His burst is subpar. I feel like he gets up to speed pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. He, and, and what you said about his, I mean, he's, you know, he, what is he, 2, 214, 215 or something like that. So he is a thicker guy. Yeah. But I, I, he doesn't run with power. I think he can lower his shoulder on a defensive back, and I think that's kind of more his speed. Uh, but when he's taking on a, a linebacker, if he's taking on a defensive a line back, you know, defensive lineman, he's never going to move a pile. He doesn't. He, he could take a hit, but he's not moving a pile. Yeah, he's not, gonna, like, he's not going to move a pile. He's not a weak guy. Like, he's not going right. down on first contact. It's weird because you see him, you're like, this is guys. He runs so violent, but he's not punishing anybody. It's weird. But he it takes a hit. He doesn't get knocked over, but he's not moving anybody. It's a weird player. Here's he's what I'll here's what I'll say about about him because I I am a fan of Kylan Hill. Now, like I said, he's not one of the top four guys for me. Sure. Um, but and actually, of course, I just lost my sheet. There it is. Could you uh, beat Mike Davis? I I think I think he could be. A, a, a Mike Davis type of player. Right, like got, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't hate that because I, I do think I do think his vision is one of the the things that I'm I'm the most concerned about. I don't think he has great vision. Mm -hmm. I think it's very mediocre. Uh but what I do like is I do he does have good patience. So he is willing to wait for the whole develop. He just doesn't always see it. Um but I think he has good elusiveness. I think he has good tackle breaking ability. I think he he's slightly above average with speed. I think he's slightly above average with burst. Like I think that there's a lot of tools there. And now that we saw him have the ability to be a weapon in the passing game, I think that there is enough raw skills, enough raw tools. He was pretty highly regarded coming out of out of high school as well, four star player. I I think that it was just one of those situations that we've seen with some other players at times where he was just on a really bad team and there was just not a lot of help there, but I think he's a good enough all around athlete and a good enough all around player that if he gets with the right coach gets with the right system, there's enough tools to work with that he could develop into a nice player. So while I don't think he's there yet, I think that there's enough to work with. So I actually, him and J uh, Jamar Jefferson are like neck and neck for me. I actually now, as I'm looking at it, I actually bumped Kylan Hill slightly above Jamar Jefferson. He's got looser hips than Jefferson. He does. You know I mean, he, he's a little bit looser in that area. 
uh, which is nice to see. Um, I said that, that, that Mike Davis count to me, like I could see him that like now that he's been involved in that, that passing, I'm like, oh, yeah. I can envision him being like that little stout Mike Davis kind of runner. I had him, situation at, I had him well. down as like a stockier Miles Gaskin type of, of, of runner for some reason. Cause I, didn't I could see that because of the passing work that he had this year. And I just didn't see the power that I thought I'd see. And I know Miles Gaskin's probably I, I 10 the, pounds lighter than him. I think so the biggest reason we didn't see as much power as he has is he does run too upright. He does. He definitely does. Um, and I think upright. that's the biggest thing for him is if we could get him to lower his pad level and, and I think get – him with some other weapons. And I and I saw him do it. I saw him do it against a defensive back, and that's why I made sure to say that because I saw him lower shoulder. Yep. I saw him knock a defensive back backwards on his butt and keep on going, and I liked it. I thought it was a great run and a great example of what he could be. Yeah. Um, so I think there is some upside here, upside here with, with Kalen that I just this, – This is a boom-bust guy. For he me. definitely is a boom-bust guy. You think if he gets in the right situation where he's coached up a little bit where he's um, – Talk to maybe like okay, like this just to process the whole game quicker, you know, mm-hmm. like just like in the playbook. Hey, this is what you're going to see. This is how you this is how you attack. This is what you utilize. Because again, I mean, good hips, good good jump cut. You know, yep. there, good hands, good size, enough yeah. power, mm-hmm. prototypical size. Like there's a lot of things to Inter- work with. Yeah, there's he's an interesting prospect. Yeah. Right? When I when I, when you guys came over and we were talking about the prospects, like, oh, there's some interesting prospects here. I guess Kylan Hill falls in that category. It's just. It's hard for me for when I saw on the tape to envision him as a starter. I see the tools there, but it's like, again, kind of that, that the change of pay, kind of like what Mike Davis has been up to this point. But then Mike Davis got a chance in Carolina in that system with Joe Brady, and he looked fantastic. He was so, a running back one. So we mentioned Marlon Mack as a comp. Like, is he a Marlon Mack type, but that can catch the ball? Like, you're I, constantly, you're if he was your starting running back for a long period, you'd be looking to replace him. Like, is he that so, kind of talent? So he can get you a thousand the, yards. This is going to sound weird because in the right situation, we've yeah. gotten a lot of flack. Like if, if we've gotten flack for anything this year, it's been on this player I'm about to mention, but I think it's like a, a slightly watered down version of the guy I'm about to say. I think he's a slightly watered down cam Akers is what we have here. Huh. I think we have a good athlete. He's got your prototypical size. He can catch the ball. He can do some things well, but he doesn't have the best vision at times. He doesn't always use all of his tools as well as he should be able to. So I think Cam Akers is way more like agile, fluid. I just, I think. I, I, agree, think, I agree with that. He, Cam Akers is more more fluid or, or athletic, I think. Oh, yeah. so yeah. Just, I, I agree with yeah. that, and that's why I think he's a, yeah. I think he's a slightly down. watered down version of, of Cam Akers. Okay. Well, a lot of people would like that. Yeah, so. yeah, and yeah, and I had Cam Akers at like a seventy three, and I have him at a seventy one. So that kind of reflects in that. Okay. He, he's yeah. definitely a good prospect to get grab like in a, I guess right now off the top of my early heart. third, early third, and it, it's sure. it's so hard because it's I haven't done the receivers yet, and they're so deep. It's like where you know where's the third round start, and there's a couple of tight ends that are gonna be in there. I don't know that many if, is when we're talking about NFL draft. I don't know that there's gonna be many running backs that are in the top two days. I think our top three guys are pretty safe. Yeah. After that, it's like a. So if any guy like a Kylan Hill or like a Michael Carter or like a, you know, ends up getting that third round draft capital, I think that will be very interesting to see, like, maybe this team really likes this guy because there are so many guys that are in that, like, fourth, fifth round range for NFL talent.